Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, back from vacation with a, another sketchbook Sunday. This week we are going to paint some fruit from my imagination. I had a lot of fun with this. I just played in my sketchbook and I used some supplies that are new to me. Um, I had recently found these super crayons on Amazon. They're by US Art Supply and I will link to them in the video description. And they're kind of like a, a water-soluble oil pastel. They go down very similar to gelatos or the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons, but they do stay workable longer than the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons, but they the packaging is pretty much the same. I paid uh, about $15 for 36 colors, and um, I thought that was a great value, especially since there's quite a bit of product in there, and they are so much fun to work with. They're... Um, a little more transparent than the traditional gelatos, so they might be a little bit more like the new transparent gelatos, and uh, they are more transparent than, say, the um, like Primo water soluble oil pastels. But saying that, I just want to let you know that if you have any of those products I just mentioned, go ahead and give them a try. The only one you might struggle with a little bit uh, with this technique would be the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons because those are a little bit more oily, and um, once they've been applied to your paper, you don't have as much time to dilute them with water and paint with them. So I if you have gelatos, if you have like the Target gel crayons, if you have the Primo water soluble oil pastels or the Portfolio water soluble oil pastels, they're all going to work very similarly. So, um, so use what you have, and if not, you can check out these um, these uh, crayons that I have here. For brushes, I'm using the Zen All Media um, watercolor, well, Zen All Media brushes by Roll and Langnickel. They are not a watercolor brush per se. They are a uh, golden taclon. They are a little bit stiffer in bristle um, than like your, the, like the, Zen watercolor brushes or the Mento watercolor brushes, but they uh, that stiffness allows you to liquefy the um, the oil pastel a little bit better. I just I, I don't know calling them crayons seems weird. They definitely feel more like oil pastel. And I apologize that I'm still a little stuffy. I had a cold while I was on vacation. Um, actually, I came down with it a couple of days before I left for vacation. That's why I didn't have too many videos to share while I was gone. Uh, so just I apologize if I'm a little stuffy uh, sounding as we go along. Um, but anyway. These, these brushes are really good for liquefying those uh, crayons or oil pastels, what do you, whatever you want to call them. Um, I also can mix some watercolor in with them, and the watercolors that I'm using are the um, Meaden watercolor uh, fan of colors, and um, I decided to give those a try because I kept seeing a very similar set advertised on Instagram, but for like an exorbitant amount of money, and I knew they were just probably drop shipping from Amazon, so I found them on Amazon, and uh, the same exact thing for like a third of the price, and they are just fantastic. So um, I am going between using just the crayons, like coloring them and liquefying them, and also using some of the watercolors because um, I find with those watercolors, I can thin them down and use them like really soft uh, watercolors, or I can use them fairly thickly. And I've barely made a dent, and I've been using them all during vacation, so I'm very pleased with them. And I'll link those below as well in case you want to check those out. Uh, the set of 42 colors I got was $19, uh, but they do have smaller sets for like $13 if you're interested in just trying something small. Uh, there are a lot of colors that are kind of similar, but I didn't think that was a bad thing just because the pans are very thin, so I don't know how long the paint's going to last. So I figured having like like three different shades of color that are very similar to phthalo blue probably wasn't a bad thing. Um, so you could see I was overlaying them on top of the gel crayons, which are a little oily. So because I am layering over that uh, material, you do not want to have it super watery because it will want to puddle because there is like an oily quality to those gel crayons. Now the gel crayons are marketed towards kids. They are... Um, advertised as super washable, and since they're super washable, they're also super water soluble, and they're great for doing watercolor effects. So uh, that was kind of like a, just a happy accident. They've been in my cart for a while because I was just curious about them, and I love that there were so many colors in a reusable plastic uh, storage case, and I figured if I didn't love them, then my kids would sure would have a ball with them, but honestly, I haven't let them play with them yet because I've been having so much fun with them, um, and I'd been using them on some little postcards, little watercolor postcards, and I just found them to be so charming and fun to use that um, that I wanted to do more of a larger piece of my sketchbook and uh, and see what I thought. So basically, my my feeling here is I'm almost trying to paint like um, I want the feeling of like a a kitschy tablecloth. You know, if you've ever seen those um, tablecloths you could buy for like your picnic table, they usually have like some really 
simple design on them. And I was thinking about like fabric that was popular in the 50s, just the cherry prints and the fruit prints and the vivid colors and the, you know, super optimistic um, imagery that, you know, you saw in the 50s when, you know, America was at the super optimistic time. And I thought that would be really fun. And as I was painting this, I thought, you know, this would actually be really fun to do on a large canvas in acrylics. So I'm going to see what my husband thinks of this sketch. And if he likes it, I think I'm going to grab, I have this like humongous canvas that I've been waiting to do something with. I actually have two of them. And I thought this would be really fun to do for our kitchen because our kitchen walls are about the same color as that background, um, kind of tealy blue color. Uh, so I thought that would be really, look really sharp in the kitchen and be really bright and cheerful because I always, I'm always trying to do stuff in the kitchen that's really bright because I am not someone who likes to hang out in the kitchen. I'm not someone who likes cooking that much, but to have something uh, bright and cheerful, I think would be, would be nice and make me want to be in there more often. Um, I have been, since I did my big KonMari declutter last year, I have been enjoying cooking more, I think, because I, um, I prep better and I will just kind of take my time instead of just trying to rush through an unpleasant task. I will actually like put on the radio and, you know, listen to NPR and just kind of, uh, just chill out and cook and take my time and not feel so rushed. So, um, so I think just having something like this that's really bright and cheerful on the wall would be fun. So sometimes it's fun just to work these ideas out in your sketchbook. I didn't go by any references. I just went from imagination. I want to unwind that that stick of crayon there just so you could see how much was in there. Uh, it's a little bit more than you get in a Tim Holtz Distress Crayon, I believe. Um, and honestly, I never really got on with the, the Distress Crayons. I bought three packs um, to try out when they first came out, those first three color packs. And I kept them because they were so darn expensive and I'm like determined to find something to do with them. But honestly, they just were not, they didn't really fit with my style of working. I think because you have to, if you're going to like dissolve them, you have to do it so quickly. And I kind of like to put her around and perhaps come back to it and decide if I want to dissolve it or not. And that just doesn't work. I mean, in the upside, if you're using them on a card, they're not going to stay smeary if you want to use them thickly, like a gelato might, but, um, or these crayons would, but I just like to have a little bit more open time, I guess. So they just didn't, didn't work with me that well. I like how these crayons are almost a little bit gouache, like kind of in between the gouache and a watercolor. They're um, a little more opaque than a watercolor and thicker than a watercolor, but they're not as opaque as a gouache. But you could definitely use them with both of those medias. I'm using them here with watercolor, but you could totally use some gouache with them. And by adding some water and watercolor and dissolving them a bit, that's gonna keep them from being sticky and creamy and sticking to the page uh, next door. I think this would be an excellent product for kids, especially with like a, like a watercolor uh, pad or watercolor sketchbook. And you wouldn't have to get a really high quality watercolor pad because you're not gonna be putting so much water. They're gonna lubricate the paper a little bit because they are so oily, so you're not gonna get a pilling um, issue. So even if you had a very inexpensive watercolor pad, and you gave these to kids, I think they would enjoy it. Now, the paper I'm using right here is the Hannah Mule watercolor pad, which isn't super high quality, but I'm finding I enjoy it just fine. I've been using a lot of Hannah Mule paper lately. Uh, the company had sent me a bunch to review, so I will be doing a review with examples on the different papers they sent me coming up in the future. Uh, for those of you curious, it's a, it's a good option for folks in Europe because they, they have um, less options, but that's an option that they have, which is uh, nice, and I believe it's fairly affordable too. So here you can see me using those watercolors as gouache. At first I didn't think that white was all that opaque when I swatched them out, um, but using them on top of these crayons, it really is nice. It's really quite opaque and it's really giving me that kind of gouache quality that I like. Um, now some people have asked me if this watercolor palette, if you can get refills for it, not that I know of, and I assume that these pans are probably glued in and they've got to be super thin because these, um, each of those little fans that fold out is probably only about an eighth of an inch thick. Um, so I don't, I think they probably extruded the pans and glued them in. I intend to refill them with probably my core watercolors because I find that they are, they dry down super hard and super adhesive. So I think I'll be fine with that. Um, but like I said, it's $19 for that set of 42 colors. If you found you use them up pretty evenly, it wouldn't be that bad to just order another set. Of course, I'm gonna refill mine because I don't like the plastic waste, um, but I'm really pleased with this. I could see this being like a standby birthday gift for artsy friends, um, just because it's so darn fun, especially if you just want an uh, inexpensive set of watercolor paints to have in your card making or scrapbook bag for those occasional times you wanna use watercolor. But like I said, also, I've been using this really heavy over the last week on vacation and I've barely made a dent. It seems like there's a lot of product and it's very concentrated, which 
I was very pleased at being that the paints were so inexpensive. Something I really love with the watercolor crayons is overlaying um, and building up and, and scribbling into wet paint. It just gives you this really interesting painterly effect, nice lines and nice marks, and it's just fun and they just glide and slide and it's just a lot of fun to use. And when I say watercolor crayons, these are not like the Karen Dosh watercolor crayons or the Jane Davenport Aqua Pastels. Those are drier feeling. Um, these are definitely more greasy feeling like a water soluble oil pastel. Um, and they, they're a lot of fun. I, I'm enjoying these a lot. And I find also that I enjoy products that are kind of inexpensive because I don't have to feel like they're precious and I need to hoard them. Look at how the lavender just overlays on the orange to give me the subtle shading. It also works really good on the yellow. Um, because these are such a transparent media, I can go over and, and overlay and get a little bit more delicate of a line. But if I go in with those pastel shades like the white and the uh, mint and the uh, kind of like creamy yellow, I can get a little bit more body to my color that way or i just go in with the white paint from my um, meat and fan set there and i can make anything have a little more body to it or you could also use just white gouache or like white watercolor paint from a tube or white tempera paint whatever you have you probably have some sort of you know iteration of a, an opaque water soluble white media and i mean if worse comes to worse you could grab a tube of acrylic um just be careful that you don't that you know that that's exactly where you want it because once the acrylic dries it's going to make whatever paint you mixed into it um non-water soluble as well so i mean like you could use a gesso you could use something like that but i would definitely reserve that for the final stages of your painting and not kind of work through it with the white like i am here that would be a permanent um a permanent thing so you'd want to hold off with that so now i'm using this darker teal color uh crayon to add some shadow on my um kind of my background there to kind of give the fruit a little more weight. I didn't want it to look like it was cut and pasted. I wanted it to have a little bit of a, like you've laid all these fruits down on the table and they've cast a little bit of a shadow. So I kind of have the shadow to the bottom of the fruits um, because I'd already put highlights to the top of the fruits on like those cherries and stuff. So I, I wanted them to agree a little bit. Um, I hadn't really put a ton of thought into this as I'm going around. I'm just kind of painting very intuitively, which is fun. I did a lot of that on vacation because I, I was just sitting by the pond, uh, you know, with my sketchbook and some supplies, very limited supplies, even the kids' supplies, and just playing. And I, I think the more that you do that, the more you build your skills for painting intuitively and, and going from memory and going from your imagination. So it's definitely good to give yourself permission to play and, um, and create like that. Because I think sometimes we feel, I know I feel sometimes, like, especially if I'm, I know I'm going to be recording something, and I try not to on Sketchbook Sunday because I like to keep that very pure and free uh, but you know if I know I'm going to be recording something I'm less likely to take a chance because I want it to come out good and I don't want to take a meandering route to the end I want it to be more direct so if you're following along you're not doing all this unproductive stuff that isn't important to the end result um, so it's important to play sometimes so that you can make allow yourself to make mistakes and then you know, figure out how to solve them, I guess. So I thought that I wanted some pattern on my tablecloth area, so I decided to do polka dots, and I just did it with a black crayon, um, and I haven't used black yet in this uh, painting, so now that I have, I will be able to go in and, and use it some more if I want to. And I'm just using a round brush to um, round out my polka dots a little bit better and make them a little bit more solid, just with some water and that uh, black crayon that I put down. I really think this gives it a nice pop, and it really gives me that 1950s feeling uh that is so cheerful and optimistic that i love um of course i'm i'm not old enough to have been born in the 50s my parents were um and it's you know i i don't know they i look at photos from the 50s and i just love that vintage feeling and the optimism and the optimism in the design and the bright um cheerful colors you know they were just out of world war ii and life was good and people were feeling optimistic and um and that's what I that's what I really wanted to capture in this piece, and that's why I think it would be such a cheerful uh, picture for my kitchen um, done on a large canvas. So if I do that, let me know in the comments below if you want to see a. I don't know if I do a full tutorial of it. I have to definitely chop it down because it's a huge canvas. But if you're interested in that, um, let me know in the comments below. Or if you think, no, Lindsay, you covered it just fine here. We don't need to see any more of that. You can let me know that too, uh, because I do appreciate your honesty. Um, and so now what I did was I took that uh, black crayon. I'm actually just dipping my pen, uh, my uh, 
paintbrush rather, it's a number six round, in uh, in water and picking up the pigment from the, the tip of the crayon. And I'm just giving like a really, sh really thin, scant outline of the bottom and the shadow areas of the fruit so they would pop off the fabric a little bit more. And now I'm going directly in with that white uh, crayon. You can see it's not super opaque, but it definitely gives me that nice, um, subtle highlight. And I'm just going in and, and brightening up the highlight areas to help make things seem a little more rounded and help things kind of stand up from the background a little bit. And here here I'm going back in and I'll tell you what, I really like filberts when I'm using um, gouache or acrylic or oils. I really love filberts because they give you the um, softness of a round and the detail of a round. They give you the body of a flat, like, meaning you can push that heavier paint around like a flat brush can, but it just doesn't give you that harsh edge. So. I'm using the filbert there and I'm just picking up paint from my watercolor palette and by using a little bit of water and a filbert I'm able to get a thicker paint that I can really control and really lay down on top of all of the greasy crayon because if I was trying to go in with like a really watery like if I was using a soft brush like your typical watercolor brush the brushes I love for watercolor it wouldn't cut it on this I would end up with a puddle that would sit on top almost bead up on that oily surface from the watercolor crayons so um, by using the um, all media, the Zen all media filbert, I'm able to pick up a thicker paint and be able to lay it down on top of that greasier um, under layer. It's a fat over lean rule. I can't put lean or watery paint on top of these uh, fatter layers of the uh, oil pastel gel crayon, whatever you want to call it, because it's just not going to stick. It's going to roll off. It's going to beat up. I'm going to get puddles. I'm going to get weird water spots. Uh, so you've, you've got to work kind of drier as you go. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a lot of fun to make this picture and I really am looking forward to maybe exploring this larger with acrylics. Let me know what you think in the comments below and if you are interested in a larger acrylic tutorial, thanks so much for watching. All the products I used are linked up in the video description. Until next time, happy crafting. Oh, oh, I might have a surprise live stream later tonight. So if you're watching this on Sunday the 8th of July, uh, tune into my channel because you might have a little surprise. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.